In this video, we will solve problem 2.7 of the textbook Mechanical Vibration from Rao, 6th edition. This is part of chapter 2. My name is Carmen Mueller Carrier. We have three springs and a mass attached to the rigid weightless bar PQ, as shown in the figure. And we like to find the natural frequency of vibration of the system. The first thing that I will do is do the free body diagram of the system. I have the free body diagram of the bar and I have the free body diagram of the mass. I have at P a pivot, which is a pin that creates two reactions. It doesn't allow the motion in X and it does not allow the motion in Y. Then I have a reactive force due to this spring. This spring is being compressed, therefore the force goes upwards. The spring 2 is being extended, therefore the, the force goes also upwards. Then we have the spring 3. It has a relative motion between these two points. If I call this displacement x, and I will call this displacement y, I have to assume, for example, that x is greater than y. I could assume the opposite. is just to give a direction to my force of the spring. If x is greater than y, the spring is being extended. Therefore, I have a force of the spring in this direction, which is a spring 3. Since bar is weightless, I do not have the force of the weight. And I just said that I will call this displacement y. And I will call the displacement of the mass x. Now let's do the free body diagram of the mass m. I do have the force of the spring by action and reaction. It goes in the opposite direction and I have the weight of the mass. Remember that the static deflection of the system will can cancel out with the weight because the weight is a constant force. So at the end, I will not include the weight in my motion analysis because it will cancel out with the static deflection of all the springs. And this is because X is measured from the static equilibrium position. The force of the spring 1 will be equals to K1 times the deflection of this point over here. And the force of the spring 2 will be K2 times the deflection of this point here. Went to. And the force of the spring 3, K3 times the relative displacement between the two ends of the spring, therefore, will be x minus y. By similar triangles, I can say that if this is y, this is y2, and this is y1, and I have that this is L1, this is L2, and this is L3, I can say that y over L3 is equals to y2 over L2, which is equals to y1 over L1. Therefore, y1 can be written as L1 over L3y, y2 is L2 over L3y. This is valid for small rotations where we can say that L1 cosine of theta is equals to L1 because since we have very small rotation, the cosine of 1 is equals to 1 and sine of theta is equals to theta. Now we do our equations of motion for the bar. Remember that the bar is weightless. So we take moment at point P, which is the pivot, and we will have the moment at F1 will be Fs1 times L1, positive S2, S the force of the spring 2, times L2, minus Fs3, 
times L3. And this will be equals to zero because I do not have kinetic forces because the mass of the bar is neglected. I will substitute the forces of the spring. The force of the spring one is K1 times Y1 L1. K2 times Y2 L2 minus K3 X minus Y L3 equals zero. Now I substitute a, the values for Y1. I say Y1 will be L1, so this will be square over a 3. Y plus K2 will be L2 square over L3. Y minus K3. X minus Y. L3 equals to C. I'm going to solve for this value. Why? Because we have only one degree of freedom in this system, which is described by the motion of x. So y in terms of x, which is k1 l1 square over l3 plus k2 l2 square over l3 plus k3 negative plus times negative becomes positive l3. All that multiplies y and this I can write in the other side of the equation, K3L3X. From this equation, I can write that Y in terms of X will be equals to K3 divided by K1L1 squared L3 squared plus K2L2 squared over L3 squared plus K3, all that multiplied by X. Now I do the equations of motion of the mass. I will add forces in Y. That's equals to FS3 equals negative M and the acceleration X2 dot. I am not writing down the weight because, as I said, since the variable X is measured from the static equilibrium position, the weight cancels out with the static deflection of the spring. This force of the spring is K3 times X minus Y minus M X2 dot. This is equal to K3 times X minus K3 Y equals to negative M X2 dot. And the acceleration is negative because it opposes to the force of the spring. It's going downwards. So I'm going to substitute the value with, that we found for Y and then we have K3X minus K3, and the value that we found for Y is K3 divided by K1 L1 square L3 square plus K2 L square L3 square plus K3. That multiplies X as well, and this is minus X2 dot. So if we do the algebra and we take the x that is common for these two terms, I can find a single term multiplied by x that will give me mx2 dot plus k3 k1 l1 square over l3 square plus k3 k1 l2 square over l3 square. The term for k3 square cancels out and this is all divided by k1 l1 square l3 square plus k2 l2 square l3 square plus k3 all that multiplies x so this term over here becomes the equivalent contents of the spring and this over here is the equivalent mass. Now we know that the natural frequency is defined as the equivalent constant of the spring divided by the equivalent mass. So I will substitute those two values and this will be the expression for the natural frequency of the system. So just for conclusion, this is the solution of this problem in which we did the both free body diagrams.
we found the forces of the spring by the deflection of each of the points where the springs are located. We did the equation of motion of the bar by taking moment at the pivot. And then we found a relation between y and x. And then we took the equations of motion for the mass and substitute what we found for y here in this equation. And we found the equation of motion of the system. And with the equation of motion of the system, we found the equivalent constant of the spring and the equivalent mass of the system. And the natural frequency is defined as the square root of equivalent constant of the spring divided by the equivalent mass. And so we found the natural frequency of the system.